Hey everybody, welcome back to the shop. <clears throat> uh, we're working on Scott's uh, AMC 20 axle here. I got the 30 right over there, but we're doing the 20 first. Okay, uh, when I left off, um, we had established the pinion depth. Let's see if I can get this out of here. <clears throat> okay, that's a, a setup cup that I have. Uh, the OD is, is uh, ground smaller. Got a 98,000 shim in there. And uh, when you use the tool that we use, you, you usually hit it, you know, right on the money every time. But I put a setup cup in there anyway, just to, just to, in case I got to change that shim. So it just goes in by hand. And today we are going to use a crush collar eliminator kit which I have right here you got your base you got your shims and then your upper here's a couple of crush collars this is one that has not been crushed <clears throat> 488 thick this is the one that came out of his axle has been crushed 50 thousands that's 438 I have another setup bearing here slip fit uh, here's here's the actual bearing that will be tight on that shaft, but for now uh, when we're changing shims setup bearing is key Pinion bearing is pressed on um, So we're going to take our 438 and We're going to measure our whole package here, and we're going to start at 438 to see if we get the right rotational torque one thing you need to be sure of you're going to get your kit, just the plain flat spacer goes, and then however many shims you need. And you see this guy, it has a, a lip on it. That lip needs to go up against your bearing like that, and that allows space between the outer cage if you put it the other way it would bind up and you'd smoke that bearing right out of there see there's no clearance there it's riding on the cage make sure that lip is towards your bearing and your shims actually will fit in the recess there like that so just get your calipers put the shims in Measure your thickness. And like I said, I always start right at the crushed size. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. That's why we have a setup bearing there. So it makes changing shims real easy. So we're going to try and set the rotational torque on this uh, 20 today. I have his locker in. I have his 373 gear set up. I've got the new uh, case. So, um, you want to be careful, set this up, make sure all these brand new parts uh, last another lifetime. So, I'll get set up and uh, we'll get that rotational torque finished. Okay guys, I don't know if you're going to be able to see this alright. We're just, we're just testing the rotational torque here. Our spec is uh, 5 to 20. And we are right at... Let me take a peek here. Uh, right at about 17, maybe 18 inch-pounds of rotational torque. So you want to check your rotational torque while it's spinning, not your breakaway torque when you first start. But as you're moving, just make sure your torque's where you want it to be. Uh, now that took me five different setups to get to where I wanted to be. Um, sometimes you hit it easy. Oh, let me get out of here. Sometimes you hit it easy. We started at 438. Let me get some stuff out of the way. 
way here. Okay, we started at 438, which is this one crushed. Um, when I put that set up in there, I had slop up and down in the pinion when I torqued the nut to 175. Uh, and then I started taking five out at a time. And we wound up at, um, from the 438, we wound up at uh, 528. Um, you know, I, I took five out, I took five out, um, then I tried a three, you know, you got to play around with it, but um, it was in and out five times just to get what I liked. I was real close twice, but I was a little too light. Um, I only had like four inch pounds, and that just wasn't where I wanted to. My new bearings, you need to be higher than used bearings. But what I'm saying is, get yourself some setup bearings. If you're going to use this uh, eliminator, this crush collar eliminator, and I think it's critical. Uh, I don't like crush collars. Um, it, they're super easy to set up for the factory when they're doing this. Doesn't matter if the machining's off a thousandth or two thousandths or anything. You just squeeze that so you get the right rotational torque. Uh, even some of the bigger Dodge trucks, you know, modern trucks, uh, big one-ton trucks, they know we're going to be towing trailers and stuff. They put crush collars in, and a lot of guys. Uh, lose the torque on that and then they wind up eating up their ring and pinion um, This is one thing In addition to these one-piece axle shafts. This is one thing that makes a very very strong AMC 20 The ring gear is larger than a Dana 44. I know a lot of guys love 44s. I like them as well uh, The 20 ring gear is bigger than a 44 um, thicker heavier duty um, crush collar was a problem but now with this uh, crush collar eliminator kit uh, that fixes that up and we get away from the two-piece axles and put these high quality one-piece axles in and you're just as strong if not stronger than a 44 uh, housings are strong uh, you can weld them if you really think you need to and you can weld them right here and here um, but they do have the same type of plug welds as the Dana 44 and don't be afraid of the 20s, guys. Do not be afraid. A lot of guys badmouth the 20s. Uh, it is a sturdy axle. And with a few upgrades, you can make it into uh, just as strong as a 44. So, pinion rotational torque is set. Now, remember, we got a setup bearing cup under that. And we got a setup bearing um, under the, uh, the yoke. I'm not going to touch those. I'm going to drop in. I'm going to drop that guy in. I'm going to put the bearing. The nice things about these bearings is they're shimmed from the outside. So I can put that bearing on, and then outside of the cup is where we're going to shim that. So I'll get that all set up. Make sure I like the backlash. Make sure I like the tooth pattern. And then we'll pull everything apart again. Knock in the real bearings and the real cups. And we'll be all set up with the ring and pinion. So uh, I'm going to get working on the carrier next and get that dropped in. Okay, guys, we've got the uh, ring gear in there. We're going to check the backlash. We should be anywhere from 6 to 10. Uh, I've got this guy set up. Uh, we're coming in right around uh, 7.5. So we've got our backlash correct. We've got the crush on the carrier bearings correct. I've got um, uh, just about a nine thousandths squeeze with my shims. So we got a good squeeze on those. I don't want to go too crazy on that. You'll just burn up your bearings. Um, so that's set. We know the pinion's set. Like I say, this is going to have to come out again so we get all our setup gear out of there. But um, I like doing it now and seeing where we're at. Uh, going to put a, uh, a bit of marking compound on the teeth next. And we'll give it a, uh, a roll through and see what kind of contact pattern we have.
Okay, we'll just mark up a few coast and drive side. And we'll see what we get for a pattern. Okay, let me get you off the stand here and take you in there and show you what we got. And it's kind of light, but you can see. Oops, you can see we're centered in the tooth there. I think you can see the shadow of it. Uh, so we know our pinion is correct. Uh, I think you can see better there. See the shadow in there? Right in there and there. See how we're centered in the tooth side to side? That's that's a correctly set pinion is going to give you that. Okay, let's see if we can see the other side. Okay, we're down low. We're still centered and we're down a little bit lower. Um, not a problem and looks like we got a nice setup we're gonna roll through again and just uh, check some teeth again and see where we're at um, I'm liking what I'm seeing so far okay guys you see we got a decent pattern on there uh, teeth are centered we're getting good contact on the drive side and the coast side. This will be a nice, long-lasting, quiet rear. Uh, should give a lot of miles of service. Um, one final thing about you know any differential. Um, you, you know, a lot of guys try these at home and they, they email me and they say they're having trouble. Um, you, you've got to be patient with these. You've got to be willing to take things. Uh, put them together, take them apart, put them together, take them apart. I mean, it's just a process. You've got to, uh, if you don't have a pinion depth tool, it makes it a little more difficult because you've got to really get that pinion set correctly uh, before you fool around with your backlash and your bearing preload and stuff. Um, but you got to be patient. Like I say, it took me, it took me five tries to get that uh, rotational torque correct. Um, that's why setup bearings are a key. Um, you don't want to be beating up your pinion gear, knocking it in and out. Um, you know, just you know, have your have your wits about you. Don't be worrying about the phone ringing or anything going on. You've got to concentrate when you're doing these if you want them to come out correct and last a long time. Um, you know, if it takes you a day or it takes you two days, I mean, that's not really much um, in the scheme of things, you know, for a lifetime of use out of these things. But um, Scott's setup here uh, is perfect. Uh, he's got a locker in there. Um, the, the pinion preload is correct. The carrier bearing preload is correct. The tooth pattern is perfect. Backlash is right on the money. So uh, I feel good about taking this apart, putting the correct cups and bearings in there, and, uh, and buttoning this up. So I hope this shows you guys how to get rid of that uh, nasty crush collar and, and change it out for a shim setup and uh, I've done a lot of videos on ring and pinion setups and uh, I hope each one helps you guys along and get you where you need to be on your own differentials so just a shorty today and uh, we're gonna end this one here and uh, thanks for watching catch you on the next one